This presentation covers the last three messages sounded by the trumpets of Revelation 8. I trust you will enjoy it. In our previous study, we endeavored to decodify some of the symbols of the four trumpets. I do hope that these strange symbols took on a new meaning for you. We've discovered that the first trumpet symbolizes the divine judgments that came upon Jerusalem and the Jewish nation. Why? Because they rejected Christ and persecuted his followers. Had the Jews accepted Christ as their Messiah instead of crucifying him on Calvary, their history would have been different today. At the Holocaust at Yad Vashem in Jerusalem, I saw the humiliation and persecution of the Jewish nation throughout the ages. When Jesus wept over Jerusalem, he saw the fate of his dear people. He wanted to spare them these atrocities, but they refused his offer for help. The second trumpet symbolizes judgments upon the Western Roman world. You're looking at a mosaic floor that archaeologists uncovered under meters of lava and volcanic ash at Herculaneum near Pompeii. Just as Vesuvius erupted and covered the cities below with ash and lava, so too did the barbaric tribes erupt over the Roman Empire and cover it with lava of war. Whatever a kingdom sows, it also reaps. And like the kingdoms of old, most calamities that befall us are the direct result of our disobedience. Let us learn these precious lessons. The third trumpet fell upon the professed church of Christ when it became defiled and began sending forth streams of death rather than streams of life. The fourth trumpet covered the ensuing darkness of the Middle Ages. John Pauline says, I'm quoting, The fourth trumpet is, nevertheless, a development of the third. While Wormwood represents a distortion of the truth of God, the fourth trumpet results in the obliteration of these gospel blessings. The truth that provides spiritual life is no longer visible. In the third trumpet, people continue to drink from the springs, hoping to gain life. In the fourth trumpet, the very presence of the life-giving sources is removed in part. This comes from his book, Decoding the Trumpets of Revelation, page 415. The fourth horse represents the same period as the fourth trumpet as a time of death and darkness. This covers the period 538 to 1563 AD. God used the judgments that befell the ancient empires to call them to repentance and he wants you and me to repent when we see how much harm our disobedience causes. The next two scourges come from Islam and the Ottoman Turks. It is shocking that so many millions died in wars that were fought in the name of God and the name of Allah. Revelation 8 verse 12, As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in mid-air call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the other three angels. You're looking at Muhammad's sword in the Topkapi Museum in Istanbul. The Quran he wrote encourages worshippers to engage in holy wars called the Jihad. Should they die in battle, they are promised a special reward in heaven. Five times every day a prayer is offered from the mosque. The first prayer is about an hour before sunrise. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. While you're looking at a painting of the prophet Muhammad teaching his followers, I'm reading from page 366 of the Quran. It says, If any desert you and become Jews or Christians, seize them and put them to death. Much of the history of the Muslim faith is written in the blood of those they persecuted. May God help us to allow people to worship him in the way they prefer to do it. Let us witness to those whom we think are in error, but let us never destroy them. Revelation chapter 9 verse 1 The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, And I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. Can you still remember who this star is? We met him in the study of the third trumpet. 
This particular star represents the devil that usually works through human agents. It's shocking to realize that the devil works through church leaders to achieve his design and how often he uses you and me to accomplish his goals. Revelation 13 warns that people who worship the sea beast actually worships the devil. Do not be deceived by the signs and wonders in the religious world. Revelation 9 verse 2, When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke of a gigantic furnace. The sun and the sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. The word abyss, also translated bottomless pit, means boundless. When I looked at the vast Arabian desert, I appreciated the term that John used to describe the territory where the fifth trumpet was sounded. Revelation chapter 9 verse 3 And out of the smoke locusts came down upon the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. The first prominent Bible scholar to identify the locusts as the Muslim Arabs was Martin Luther. The locusts in John's vision were not like ordinary locusts. They were like scorpions that are known for their hostility toward man. Verse 4, they were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. I shall never forget the day when I visited the giant redwood trees of California. I was fascinated. But it is far more fascinating to discover the symbolism of a tree in the Bible. As we have seen before, green grass and trees represent God's people. In a way, the Americans harmed this tree when they made a road through it. But the locusts were told not to harm God's trees, his people. When I looked at the Blue Mosque in Istanbul, I thought of the amazing accuracy of this Bible prophecy. Did you know that Abu Bakr, successor of Muhammad, told his soldiers in 632 AD not to harm the little Jews or the Christians who kept the Sabbath? Bible prophecy has given us more than one clue to identify the fifth trumpet as early Islam. The fact that the symbol of a locust is used is very helpful. The locusts of the fifth trumpet do not eat grass, they sting like scorpions and they are shaped like horses with men's faces and women's hair. Who are they? These maps, as the text explains, suggest a satisfying solution for the intriguing problem. It's amazing, but wherever the desert locusts spread, there Islam went. A study of the Bible is fascinating. Verse 5, they were not given power to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. Who did the locusts, the Islamic soldiers, try to kill? History tells us that they tried to capture Constantinople in order to destroy the Christian church of the Eastern Roman Empire. The first recorded attack was in 674 AD. They were unsuccessful, but they did not give up. They tried again and again. The Muslims were determined to stamp out Christianity and establish their seat of government in Constantinople. After 150 years of unsuccessful military campaigns since 674, they launched their last futile attack on Constantinople in 823 AD. What did the prophecy say? For how long would they try to kill Constantinople, the seat of the Christian church in the Eastern Roman Empire? Five months. Revelation 9.5 They were not given power to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. Convert 150 prophetic days into years and you get 150 literal years. When the great prophetic clock struck, Islam relinquished its plans to capture Constantinople. Once you've studied the prophecies of the Bible, the world of antiquity takes on a new personal meaning. Before we move on to the sixth trumpet, let's do a quick review. A fallen star represents Satan and the Islamic leaders who served his purpose. Bottomless pit, Arabia viewed as a vast, mostly uninhabited wasteland, a place of death. 
flying horse-like locusts, Islamic armies in their early Arabic phase of conquest, grass and green trees, people of God whom the Muslims allow to go on living. Five months torture, approximately 150 years, probably the years between the beginning of 675 and the end of 823 AD of the early series of Islamic attacks on Constantinople. Destroyer, the locust king, Muhammad, viewed intentionally from his bad side. Revelation chapter 9 verses 12 to 14. The first woe is past. Two other woes are yet to come. The sixth angel blew his trumpet and I heard a voice coming from the horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. At about 1000 AD, the Seljuk Turks invaded Iran and adopted the Muslim religion and became the most energetic of all Islamic people. Quarrelsome, aggressive and numerous, they soon divided into factions around popular leaders, the four angels. Their ultimate goal was to conquer Asia Minor. But verse 14 says that they were bound at the Euphrates River. In other words, for a time they were held in check by some force and they could not leave the geographical area of the river Euphrates. Come with me to the Taurus Mountains where Paul, Barnabas and Mark travelled during their first missionary journey. It was right here that the young Mark became discouraged and dropped out. Has it happened to you? Well, Mark tried again and made a success of life. You too can start all over again and be successful. The thing that bound the Seljuk Turks, as mentioned in verse 14, was the Byzantine guards that were stationed here at the Taurus Mountains. It was impossible for them to break through the soldier barrier and enter the heartland of Asia Minor. At this critical moment, the emperor in Constantinople died. Some of the soldiers guarding the Taurus Mountain passes were sent to Mansikert to fight the Seljuk Turks. The enemy dashed through the unguarded Taurus Mountains and quickly took control of Asia Minor and even changed its name to Turkey. Revelation chapter 9.16 The number of the mounted troops was 200 million. I heard their number. As they swarmed through the mountain passes, many of them mounted on horses, they spread everywhere, greedily consuming the resources of the countryside. To the prophet, they surely appeared like an army of 200 million horsemen. Verse 15 says that they would kill a third of mankind. In our previous lecture, we discovered that the term usually refers to a specific entity, such as a nation and its capital. Tell me, to which nation and to which capital does the specific third of a mankind refer? To the Byzantine Empire and its beautiful capital, Constantinople. But how would they conquer the capital if the Islamic forces before them couldn't do it in 150 years? Would they perhaps invent a new kind of military weapon? Verse 17, the horses and the riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue and yellow as sulphur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions and out of their mouths came fire, smoke and sulphur. Amazing! The prophet John saw the invention of gunpowder. And he saw that the Seljuk Turks making use of gunpowder would conquer Constantinople, a third of mankind. One of the principal ingredients of gunpowder, along with carbon and salpeter, is sulphur. And every time they fired at the wall of Constantinople, there was a cloud of fire, smoke and sulphur. And this is exactly what John saw in vision. Come with me to the Rumeli fortress, which was built by the Seljuk Turks, while I tell you how the prophecy was fulfilled. Sultan Mehmet II started building the fortress in April and completed it four months later in August of 1452. The purpose was to control the sea traffic of the Bosphorus and conquer Constantinople as it was called in those days. The ships had to sail up the Golden Horn in order to come in shooting range of the city walls. 
But the Christian emperor who worshipped at the Hagia Sophia barred this seaway by laying these huge chains across the Golden Horn. So what did they do? One dark night they sidestepped the chains by pushing ships out of the water, rolled them on poles for a few meters and then pushed them back into the water. Constantinople fell the next day on the 29th of May 1453 after some fierce bombardment. It lasted a thousand years longer than the Western Roman Empire and I think it was because they behaved a little better. When I looked at the sword of Mehmet the Conqueror, I thought of the accuracy of Bible prophecy. The Bible predicted that this bastion of Christian faith would fall, and it happened. In 1453, when the Turks bombarded Constantinople, the Christians fled into this church called Hagia Sophia. They prayed for deliverance from the enemy, but their prayers were too late. Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will freely pardon. Today this ancient Christian church is decorated with Muslim minarets. What happened? On the 29th of May 1453, It was still a Christian church. But the very next day after the city fell into the hands of the Turks, the most beautiful Christian Byzantine church in the world was converted into a mosque. When I stood at the spot where Christian emperors were crowned, I thought of this tremendous loss to Christianity in Turkey. The sixth trumpet, or the third woe, struck Constantinople in 1453 and ended the history of the Christendom in Turkey. But would the mighty Ottoman Empire last forever? Only if they would treat people fairly. Let's listen to an interesting Bible prophecy. Verse 15 speaks of the hour and then adds a day and a month and a year. If you convert these prophetic times into literal time, you would get a total of 391 years. In our study on the prophecies of Daniel, we discovered that one prophetic day stands for one literal year. So one literal year gives you 12 times 30, which equals 360 days. This figure translates into 360 literal years. One 30-day month gives you 30 years and one day another one year. What do you get when you add this all up? A total of 391 years. Add 391 to 1453 and you come to a very important date, 1844. What happened to the Ottoman Empire at this time? When I looked at one of their guns in the Topkapi Museum, I thought of how their power and influence ended in the 1840s, just as the Bible predicted. On July 15, 1840, Britain, Austria, Prussia and Russia came to its help and signed the London Treaty to protect the Ottoman Empire against the aggressive Muhammad Ali, Pasha of Egypt. When I visited the Muhammad Ali Mosque in Cairo, I thought of the words of an article that appeared in the London Morning Herald at that time. It says, The Sultan has been reduced to the rank of a puppet. The Ottoman Empire limped along as the sick man of Europe until the end of the First World War. When you walk through the top Topkapi and Dolmabachi museums, you see some of the former wealth and prestige they used to have. The exhibitions of this once great empire testify to the authenticity of Bible prophecy. Its power to kill a particular third of mankind, as we've studied, was limited to 391 years. What a great prophecy. Let's do some revision. The four angels, Islamic leaders or perhaps demon princes. The Euphrates, general geographic term for Mesopotamia, the area immediately east and southeast of Asia Minor. The 200 million horsemen, the later Islamic armies, dominated by Turks and especially Ottoman Turks. 
Fire, smoke and sulfur, the use of gunpowder weapons by the Ottoman Turks. A third of mankind, the Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire, or the Eastern Orthodox Church and its capital city, Constantinople, which fell to the Ottoman Turks in 1453. An hour and a day and a month and a year, a period of three and nine one years, separating one, a series of events clustering around the fall of Constantinople in 1453, from two, another series clustering around 1844, the close of the 2300-year day prophecy. The mighty Ottoman Empire, which replaced Christianity with the faith of Islam in Constantinople, came to its end in 1844 after a long rule of 391 years. Revelation chapter 11 verses 15 and 16 The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign for ever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God. Verse 17, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The prophetic book begins with these words, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Why did he reveal these things, these warnings? He wants us to repent and be saved. Ezekiel 33 verse 11 Say to them, As surely as I live, declare the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, why will you die, O house of Israel? God sends trumpet warnings to wake people from their spiritual indifference. Some will respond, others not. Revelation chapter 9 verses 20 and 21 The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone and wood idols that cannot see or hear or walk, nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality or their thefts. You and I have a choice whether we want to remain in our sins and be lost forever or say no to sin and yes to Jesus and become obedient to all his commandments. Please say yes to Jesus and no to the devil. From now on, we are going to move into the second apartment in heaven where Jesus intercedes for us in the presence of the Father. Please ask the Lord to prepare your heart for the next message from the marvellous book of Revelation. Thank you, Francois. God is serious in his messages to the world. He expects people to listen and respond. But the choice is ours. What is your decision? Let us pray. Dear Lord, the echoes of the messages of the seven trumpets sounded in our ears today. Your desire is for each individual to be saved. Thank you for the voice of your Holy Spirit that speaks to us and invites us to accept you today. In Jesus' name, Amen.